All right, welcome back to the No Morning Show here on CTT. I am Natalie Legore. Thank you so much for rejoining us. And you can hear DJ Rockus in the background there playing that lovely song, It's My Heart. So you know what we'll be talking about this week for your body and you. And it's one of the leading causes of death in the Caribbean, even in Trinidad and Tobago. And we're talking about heart disease, cardiovascular issues. And here this morning to break it down for us is Dr. Ravi Ramlal, who is interventional cardiologist and co-clinical lead at Cath and Cath Lab Director at the Eric Williams Medical Sciences Complex. Good morning to you, Dr. Ramlal. Good morning. Thank Thanks you so much me. for joining us. Yes, yeah, so I think with this, with the heart, we always just don't know where to start. Where to start. So just talk to us about what the heart is. It's an organ. Is it a muscle? Is it a mixture? The way I like to describe the heart, it, everyone knows that the heart is quite an important organ in the body. It pumps blood throughout the body. It is one of a vital muscle that keeps beating from the minute you're born to the moment you die. So it's very, very crucial in our life. So it never gets to rest. Exactly. Yeah. It never gets to rest. I think when you think about the heart, it's a, it's a complex structure. And you need to understand that apart from blood that's in the heart, you need to think of it like a house. Mm. If you think of it like a house, a house has a lot of components. It has walls, it has wires, it has pipes. So I think if you liken that similar mindset of the heart being a house of your body in a way, it has crucial elements. When we talk about the pipes, we talk about the blood vessels that feed the wall of the mm -hmm. heart. When we talk about the walls, we talk about the muscles of the heart. And the electricity is actually that ticker, we say, that keeps beating on a regular so beat to beat So there's electricity, pipe. piping, and walls. So the walls are the muscles. The electricity is that tick tock, tick tock. And the, what did I miss? The, 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 the piping. The and piping. the piping is what? The arteries? That's right. This is the arteries. Mm -hmm. And each is serve a unique function. That's right. And when we look at heart disease, you can kind of separate it out into each one of those um, components of a house being affected. Yeah. Right? And particularly if you have the most common cause of uh, that, as you mentioned earlier, is a heart disease in Trinidad and Tobago, particularly heart attacks. Right. So the heart attack is triggered from what part? Is it the muscle? Is it the, the electricity? Is it the, the walls? What is it? So think about the plumbing in your house. Yeah. All right. That blocks off. The walls in your house could get flooded. It could get damaged, as well as the electricity in your house. Right? Yes, water and electricity. Don't so mix. the pipes are, are the most important things. So the arteries of the heart are, are very, very important. And that is what's causing, the minute that goes, the heart actually stops receiving vital nutrition that's going to help the heart muscles to squeeze as well as get the electricity working. Right. So, so you find that in most, most people with heart issues, is that it's the arteries that go bad first? Well, yeah, in the vast majority, things being common, yeah. when we have a lot of risk factors in patients, particularly in Trinidad and Tobago, we have a lot of patients that present to hospital at even younger and younger ages mm -hmm. where the arteries or the piping of the heart is blocked off or it's becoming narrowed over time. All right, Doc, let's talk about that. Since we recognize that the arteries are so critical to the, to the health of the heart, what are some of the things that cause that blockage of the arteries? And as you told, yesterday you and I were speaking, you told me that you know, you're really concerned because a lot of younger people are presenting with heart issues. Yes, and I think it's very important to recognize in our country, we underestimate how young people are presenting with heart problems. Um, and it's as young as uh, 30 years old, people presenting with massive wow. heart attacks, right? So this is a, a key component that we need to actually pay attention to. And particularly how it starts up, it starts up with the development of what we call plaque. And plaque, to think of a simple way of what plaque is within a pipe or blood vessel, 
think of a pimple that slowly starts growing. Right. And that's due to cholesterol buildup. Um, what other factors that cells, what we call bad cholesterol building up mm -hmm. in the arteries. And over time that grows and narrows the arteries. Once we get an artery that starts to narrow over 70%, then you can only feel symptoms. Before that, you may not feel symptoms at all. So it starts off very, very asymptomatic, as we would say. And then later on, in, as the pimple gets wider and bigger, it may even ruptures. When it ruptures, it blocks off the artery completely, and mm -hmm. it causes a massive heart attack. Because the heart now, the heart muscle, the electricity in the heart, is not getting all the blood that it needs because the vessel is blocked. Talk to us about the electricity. What's the role of the electricity in the heart? Well, is, that, is it like the conduit to ensure that the, the, the blood flows you know, through the artery? Is it a conduit, really? So the, the arteries are, are, are the conduit. Right. And when we talk about the electricity, we talk about uh, the, the firing of the heartbeat. So when you have a heart, uh, feel your pulse, right? It's an electrical signal that causes the heart to, the heart muscle to squeeze. Yeah. So it's really the electrical signal and little nerves, what we call the wiring. Mm -hmm. So that's, you can imagine if there's no blood supply to that area, then everything gets affected. Right, so when the arteries get blocked, then that electrical signal stops working. Yes, and, 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 and that's how come, you know, in, in a very, Extreme circumstance, uh, if that artery blocks off, it causes a very lethal electrical activity that causes people's hearts to stop. Right. But, Doc, you know, especially here in Trinidad and Tobago, what are some of the things we can look for? Because you said earlier that a lot of times you won't get any symptoms until you're at like 70% blockage of the arteries. So what can we look out for? What are some of the th little things that, you know, we as Caribbean people will like to drink a little tea or we like to say you know no it's not anything and we excuse it from 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 fatigue tiredness whatever it might be what are some of those symptoms that we can look out to say, look for to say you know what something might not be right right so that's an excellent question because one of the common things you you see a lot of patient presenting in hospital say doc in the caribbean colloquial side that's gas you know, mm -hmm. uh, I drink a, a little bit of tea and it didn't go away. And then I'm in this situation, right? So one of the key things that you'll notice, even before you get a little bit of warning in, in the sense that you find that as you exit yourself, as you go up a flight of stairs, you find something isn't right. You find you, you get extremely tired. You might get winded, a Ex shortness of breath, but only in those instances. Exactly. And, uh, it is, and now it's quite different from your normal day-to-day -day running, right? So, yeah. you know, if you were to run up five flights of stairs, everybody would get winded in some way. But it's, when it's not that normal for you, it changes yeah. for you in the sense that you've just gone up only one flight that you're accustomed to doing all your life, and now you just can't do anything. Right? And this is particularly in patients who are diabetic. They, they don't really feel the chest pain as typical as patients without diabetes. Um, what happens is that the nerves get affected and they don't get the sensation. So oh. what you might present with more commonly may say, well, I just got some w indigestion or I got short of breath. That is what they may feel. Yeah, and you know, as you talk about the indigestion, I remember speaking to a cardiologist some years before, and he was telling me that a lot of symptoms to do with the heart seem like symptoms to do with the stomach as well. So people talk about the chest burns, they'll talk about the indigestion, the, the nausea, and they dismiss it as something else. But how do we know, though? How do we know that, okay, this is not the heart and this might be the stomach? The, the, the unfortunate way, the only thing you can do is actually see professional help, right? Because it may take a, a run to the emergency department uh, to see a physician, but I think to be safe, particularly now in our country where there are a lot of people, young people, having heart disease at a younger and younger age, the classical symptom, you get chest pain coming on suddenly, radiating to the arm, that happens in, in, in a certain percentage of people, all right? Yeah. About 
Um, but when you talk about the diabetic patients and those that actually have that indigestion pain, that occurs in about 10 to 15 percent of people. Um, and as the younger they are, I've noticed in Trinidad, our way of presenting to the hospital is quite different. It's quite different from mm -hmm. compared to the U.S. So or what are we presenting with when we come to the hospital? So exactly what I, I told you. Patients present and say, Doc, I found that I can't walk up the flight of stairs anymore. And this has been going on two weeks ago, and I didn't think anything of it. So that's what a major thing as well. Patients tend to present very late, bef before we could even try to save the heart muscle. Mm. If you present early enough, time equals heart muscle. So if we are able to reestablish blood flow through a blocked artery, then what happens is that we are actually saving your heart. We are actually saving your heart function. The way the blood is pumping, it will be more efficient yeah. in, in the way we, we and act. And if we don't have that, that, that blood flow that we, that we need, does that present itself through circulatory issues? You know, like yeah. if I get up and I feel that, you know, maybe as we like to say, we're leg dead, you know, we're trying to beat it back to life. Are these issue, are these symptoms symptomatic of heart issues? So one in particular would be what we call a term called claudication, right? And this is just a term that when people actually says they get some tingling or they get some pain actually in the calves when they walk a distance. And that is actually... Uh, uh, similar to actually getting chest pain when you walk a distance mm. because you're actually having pain in the legs when you walk. It tells you that the, the muscles in the legs is actually not getting enough blood. So that's one of the ways of an additional symptom that if you have claudication, we screen you for heart disease. Yeah. So, and claudication is, a, is a, a serious disease in the sense that people could lose limbs from that. So is that like a clot in, in the leg? Yeah, it happens throughout the body. So. When you have heart disease, we do screen you for narrowings in the leg and potentially in the neck and in the brain. Because if the same process is happening in the heart, then it may be happening elsewhere as well. Right. So it's crucial to really seek professional help and get screened so that you can start trying to reduce your risk as much as possible. Is there, a, is there a time frame for, pe for people to get screened and or do you normally wait on symptoms or is there a recommendation that once you get to a certain age, you start checking your heart? So usually what happens is that if you uh, have risk factors, right, which means you are diabetic, you have high blood pressure, you are a smoker, you have a strong family history or your cholesterol is abnormal and usually over the age of 40, given what we find in our data here in Trinidad, we start screening. I think it's very important to start screening in our mm -hmm. country, as, as even, maybe even younger, given that we have 30 year olds presenting with massive heart, heart attacks. attacks. And what do you think is responsible for that, where we're seeing this shift where younger people are getting heart disease? So last year, uh, one of our papers got accepted to the um, American College of Cardiology. And we looked at the data here in Trinidad and Tobago. And what we found, we looked at patients that presented with heart attacks from 18 years to 50 years old. And what we found, that we looked at all the modifiable risk factors that they have, like diabetes, high blood pressure, their weight, alcohol intake, if the obesity, smoking. smoking. Mm -hmm. All of those things we looked at. And it's called the inter-heart risk factors. And what we noticed is that there was a two times, two and a half times likelihood of wow. having severe narrowings greater than 70% in the heart vessels in patients that smoked. So one of the biggest things I could recommend across Trinidad and Tobago is if you could actually stop smoking, it will be very beneficial to your heart and the rest of your organs. Wow, two and a half times more likely to have 70% blockage in the heart. Yeah. But is it smoking, because we like to, <laughs> to categorize, is it just smoking on a whole? Is it smoking of cigarettes, smoking of marijuana, kush, whatever the different things are? Is there a difference? Right. The, so the data suggests that it's cigarette smoking. 
Now, uh, since the legalization of marijuana um, in a number of countries, uh, data is now suggesting that it is also a risk factor. Right. And Probably not as much as cigarette smoking, but still a risk factor. Yes. Yeah. But now that it's legal in the sense that there's more data to analyze. Before it was sort of ad hoc, uh, mm -hmm. where you look and you see, okay, well, this person s smokes marijuana, we make an assumption. Now, in, in the international literature, it, we've seen more and more of a link. Right, between smoking on a whole and yes. heart disease. So then, Doc, what do we do? What do we do to safeguard ourselves? Because if the age, if, is it that we just have to know our medical condition? No, you know, well, if you're a smoker, get checked. If you have cholesterol, some of us don't even know what high cholesterol is or difference between good and bad cholesterol. But at what point should I get that, that, that siren going off to say, Natalie, you need to do something? So what I would recommend, so first, that's two-pronged approach would be first as a child in any family you want to actually encourage healthy living lifestyle so what you want to do is encourage that from a young age yeah right uh, teach your children you know to keep fit eat healthy uh, avoid you know putting toxin into your body so lifestyle can make a difference to what happens with the heart a huge huge difference so what we know as well is that if you start exercising right so at least for 150 minutes in a week of moderate to vigorous exercise, you do help your cardiovascular health, right? It keeps you healthy, keeps mm -hmm. your, your metabolic or the way the enzymes work in the heart and, and blood flowing in the heart uh, at a much better level. Yeah, so it, it always almost comes down to how much the heart is able to, how that blood flow, that circulatory circuit is working. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Doc. I think we definitely have, because if, if, if we know this, is it that people aren't aware? Is, is there ignorance around heart disease, why we have such a prevalence of heart issues in the Caribbean, especially in Trinidad and Tobago as well? There is a, a bit of, um, everybody's like, that's a heart patient. I'm a heart patient. But I think a lot of it has to do with education. A lot of it has to be been involved and as 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 a as a interventionalist i am seeing you at the end of the disease process i am seeing you when you're blocked up right and i have to fix you so that doesn't help right uh well sorry not that it doesn't help but at that point it's late exactly yeah. and, and 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 i have to either fix you with a stent or you might need open heart surgery right but ultimately what you really need to do is start off as young as you can so if you never exercise in your life, once you've been cleared by a physician to exercise, and you should do that. You should start exercising at least, you know, trying to make the recommendation of 150 minutes in a week. Yeah. And I think Trinidadians, when they hear that, wait, that's a lot of time. They'll say, I have time for that. Well, right. that's 30 minutes a day for five days. Exactly. But I think if you're now going to start off and you never exercised before in your life, what you should do is you need to, first of all, commit, make small goals. Say that you today is going to be stretching and then I'm going to do warm up. Right? Start with goals that you're achieving. Because yeah. if you try to achieve, put a, 150 minutes in a week, the chances of you being successful is going to be low. Yeah. So start with things that you could access you know, you have a floor, you have a mat, start with simple things. All right, Doc, for today, we're going to leave it there. Of course, next week, we can look at some of these underlying conditions that can affect the heart, whether it's the hypertension, the diabetes, the high cholesterol, and just how, you know, they can affect our heart health and, and make us sick. So thank you so much for being with, the, with us here, Dr. Ramlal, Dr. Ravi Ramlal, they were talking to us. And do pay attention. As you said, start as young as you can to get that exercise in eat healthily because it makes a humongous difference to what happens with your heart health.